Hello Let's Players, we are back with Legend Suit Larry and we are currently in the casino as if you couldn't guess. Let's have a little look at our patrons. They appear to be having a great time, perhaps you'd like to join them. I want to look at her in general. Apparently she's excitable. Best not, you might get your face slapped. What about this? Can I speak to her? No? Don't interrupt them, they're trying to win. What about that? Larry, don't do that to the babe. What, a, what about what about that person? Don't do that to Bertha. Oh, they have names. Ernie? Who's this? Bert? What about this lady? Don't do that to Jane. And what's... I've got no idea what's wrong with this guy up here, but let's see if he has a name. Rodney. So this chick here doesn't actually have a name. She's just Babe. It's kind of pathetic. I like the way... I like the way that the way of finding most of the names of these characters is by trying to use the zipper on them and performing obscene acts on them. Because most of the time, if you look at them, it doesn't actually give you their name. The only way to actually get their name is to click the zipper on them. Yeah. I hope you're going slow again. Not nope, just bad scene. Anyway, um, I believe I saw, I don't know if it was in my comments or on the comments of WC10K's um, playthrough, that if you use the pocket knife, on the slot machine. You're a lover, not a fighter. Okay. Apparently not. Apparently there was a rumor that if you used it... Oh, hang on. Maybe I have to be inside the game for it to work. But, um, apparently that if you used it to... Oh, that's the blackjack machine. I'm an idiot. <laughs> so that's why that's not working. But apparently if you, um, use the knife on the slot machines, you can win automatically without having to worry about chance or anything like that. No, apparently not. Maybe I have to be inside the game. Alright. Uh, where would I even put it? Okay. I'm guessing this is not how that game works. Oh well. I usually play blackjack just because, yeah. Hurry up, Larry. Otherwise, I'll stab you, Larry. Those people might have been thinking of the uh, the magnet in Space Quest One in the remake of Space Quest One. Hmm, maybe. All right. Can't bet more than you have. Save. I'm only going to do this a couple times just to show how it works, or at least how I do it. Um, money. Then, um, basically, anytime you lose, you just re-save. Uh, Seventeen. Stand. But that's cheating. <laughs> it's it's the nice way of cheating. You're not actually telling the game to give you the money. Uh, stand. Damn. Basically what I was always taught was that if you're um, above 16, it's very unlikely you're, you're going to probably bust in the next move. 19, 12, 13, 17, there we go. Yay, dealer busted. So that if you're above 16, you should probably stand rather than, um, then what's it called? Uh, then hit. Just have to leave it to chance. Or you could always split it, but I never really understood splitting, so... Beh. Seven. Yay! I is winner. Alright, so let's have a look at the other things at this place. I think with all like the flashing lights and that, that's why Larry goes a bit slower. Oh, but what's this in the in the bin? Why, it appears to be some sort of card that is lying in the ashtray. What is it? The pass card reads, Lost Wages Disco. Admit one member and guest. Remember, every Monday is ladies' night. Ah, so now we can get into the disco. Oh, and we never did read our Jugs magazine. Well, well, it looks like this month's issue is filled with intelligent literary articles laden with redeeming social value. For example, here's an article 
on how professional window cleaners secure themselves to the sides of tall buildings with a rope tied around their waist. Nah, who reads that crap? You quickly flip through to the pages until you discover, Whoa! Nice dinner fold this month! It, hey, it didn't show the center fold. That's not fair. No. You attempt to return the telephone to working order by prying the chewing gum out of the slot. You cannot. You just have to find another phone. I've always wondered why this doesn't work. No! So that's usually how you get chewing gum out. You use, like, a knife or something to slot it, like, pull it out. Let's see what's happening in the cabaret. Oh, it looks like some lovely dances to me. Isn't this originally that dance in which they, um... The can-can. Yeah, yeah, I know, it's, yeah, it's the can-can, but isn't isn't this that dance that they were originally supposed to, um... Um, flash the audience while dancing? Mm-hmm. Upon closer... I'm not doing it now, though. No. <laughs> Upon closer examination, you discover that these dancers might be not be the girls you thought they were. I don't think they... Oh, maybe it's a good thing, then. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think they'll be flashing you. So, yes. You whistle loudly at the girls. You're not sure, but you suppose they enjoy it. Uh, try and speak to them, Larry. Oh, okay. What about the zipper icon? Right, sure. As if it would reach from way down there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, they have smell from here? To you, the dancer has no distinctive smell or taste. Okay. Well, what about, would they like a knife? No, you're a lover, not a fighter. Oh, well. I guess we'll just have to let them dance and leave them. They don't have many patrons, though. I was gonna say, why is there nobody else here in the... Like, like why are they dancing for an empty room? <laughs> Maybe it's technically practice. Maybe it's not really the correct cabaret. Oh, look. There's a comic. Would you like to voice him? Man walks into a doctor's office with a frog on his head. The doctor says, may I help you? Frog says, yeah, doc. Could you take this word off my ass? Who did that? Who laughed? For this, I spent four years in college? Good look at this uh, guy. no. No, he didn't. It's a living. That's what the drummer says. Evidently, he thinks he's funny. What do you call a Roman with hair between his teeth? Gladiator. Wow, that made lots of sense. Thanks. Wait, was, was that a joke? Apparently. Thankfully, this isn't like Leaders of Larry 3 where you, uh... What are you waiting for, folks? This is the A stuff. Yeah. Thankfully, this isn't Leaders of Larry 3 where you have to sit around and wait for the entire comic routine to finish to get 100 points. <laughs> Ew. Our local inventor. What? <laughs> I was just going ill about the thought of it. Anyway. Um, our local inventor just came up with a new vibrating tampon. He says if women have to be miserable once a month, they might as well enjoy it. It doesn't sound like a drum at all. No, it really doesn't. You know, folks, it just don't get much better than this. Sit down behind the pillar where he can't see you. Oh. At least the comic's whoopee cushion doesn't smell. Have you heard about the new film about marching band musicians? It's called Desperately Seeking Sousa. Ha ha ha. That was... Boring. What a... What's the matter, folks? Am I keeping you up? Yes. Uh... I don't know. I don't. I don't quite get that one. Yeah. Oh, I imagine it's um. What's it called? Um. Desperately seeking Susan, which is a film. I've never yeah. seen it. Yeah. But um. But I don't know what Susa is. No. You shout. You shout to the comedian. This ain't funny. The comedian retorts. Retorts. But you are. But you are. <laughs> anyway, we're going to stop now because we're about to run out of time, and we will be back soon. Bye bye.